Hello and welcome to Inside the Women of Denver, where we talk to local leaders about their successes, failures, and lessons learned on the journey to success. Today, I'm talking with Julie Larkin, who lives in Golden, Colorado, and just started an inspiring program called the Best Life Challenge, where she helps people feeling overwhelmed, scattered, and frustrated find the balance they really need in their lives. I was so attracted to Julie when I first met her, and I really am excited to introduce you to her energy through this show. Julie, I'm so glad to have you today. Thank you, pleasure to be here. Great, so tell me about this overwhelm thing. I know I've felt it, and one thing I really wanna understand is why are people dealing with this right now? Is this something that is new for our time or something that people have always dealt with? Uh, I think that's probably twofold. I think it's something that people have always, always felt. However, we are living in certainly unique times. Um, I like to call it the big fat elephant in the room <laughs> or the new normal. Uh, when you ask somebody how they are, they don't say fine anymore. They say busy. Yes. <laughs> so I'm a so, culprit. I'm guilty. Right. So, and I think that we're all feeling that. Not only we're feeling that in our own lives because we're living in a culture that demands a lot more of us. There's a lot more input. Things are coming at us at all times, and that comes with its frayed nerves mm -hmm. and that sense of overwhelm. Um, but I think the thing that is sort of historic in all of it is that when we're not living in alignment with how we are strong naturally, when we don't get to have some fun for the love of God, um, <laughs> yeah, if it's just a little bit too bogged down in, in ways in which we're not good or not strong, then we yeah. tend to feel overwhelmed or feel disconnected. So what's the first key? For someone like me, I do a lot of stuff, and sometimes I don't always remember to take care of myself. Mm -hmm. And I know you're an expert at that, mm -hmm. so give me a couple tips that will help me to better take care of myself when I've just got too much on my plate and I'm just like ripping and run, running everywhere. Absolutely, well, let me first fess up and say that um, I sometimes fail on that as well. I think it's just, it's human nature. Mm -hmm. um, and. I always, my, my, my new um, business motto or business line is the, the go-getters and givers that to help them master life with ease. And a huge piece of that is about taking care of yourself. Yeah. And for me, I can relate largely to this story like, like yours, right? Of keeping ourselves very busy and going out there and doing and giving all of the time and, and then arriving at states of overwhelm or mm -hmm. forgetting to take care of yourself or forgetting to put yourself in the mix. Um, my personal story was I was really, really, really darn good at it for a really long time, and my critical mass came in motherhood. Uh -huh. uh, you threw that one more thing on top, and I was like, pump the brakes. <laughs> and then I had to get serious about it. And for me, it's, um, it's, it's a couple of things. Um, interestingly enough, human beings are the most, um, we habituate so incredibly easily. Right. Um, yet we habituate to things that are happening to us. Uh -huh. So the Best Life Challenge, which is my latest uh, group program, which really gets at one of the pillars of my work, is really positioned to help people succeed at creating a new habit. Because it's, it's challenging when we're the one that are, ones that are in charge of making it happen. Uh -huh. So uh, my advice is always uh, little and often make much. So little doses of checking in with yourself, little ways of having fun, little ways of allowing yourself some love and some space um, are gonna go a long way. It doesn't need to be a massive commitment, but it has to be a commitment. So Julie, how does one become a life coach? How did you get to this point in your life where you said, this is something I wanna do, and then what were the steps you took to get to this uh, opportunity? Um, great question. Uh, it's also something that I, I work deeply with the people who come and experience my work. I work with them on that. Um, for me, the journey was uh, where I finally came to realize that it was time to make my career out of what I was naturally good at and have always yeah. done. Um, my whole life I've been a non-judgmental ear for both friends and strangers. And it's just a natural aptitude of mine. I'm crazy interested in people and I, I've often called myself a strength spotter. I, I get to know somebody and I can immediately see how they're incredible, um, often a little bit more so than they can see of themselves. Um, Beautiful. So it, it just felt like it was time and, and once I decided it was, it was a commitment again, not unlike the one we talked about earlier, it was a commitment to make it happen. And, and then you here just I went am. out there. Yeah. 
<laughs> I just went out there. It's not that easy. I just went out there and started. <laughs> For everybody out there that wants to be a life coach, just decide and just get out there, oh, right? No, no, no. There's, there's going to be another question coming. What's, what's that next question? <laughs> So if somebody wants to follow in your footsteps, mm -hmm. what are some things they might want to think about starting to do to start that process? To become a life coach. To become a okay. life coach. Um, I think like everything, there's more than one way to arrive at an end. So I think the first thing is always really knowing yourself, uh, which is again another big pillar in my work, is really knowing who you are and how you best learn. So for me, um, I knew I needed to have people and mentorship and experiential um, experiences to to really make this mine as opposed to, for instance, doing something online. However, there is so many ways in which you could get certified to become a life coach. There's, mm -hmm. there's so many organizations. And uh, for me, it was, it was a combination of an online certification and then mentorship and really having exper experience with somebody who's been there and done that. So, so what's the thing that you're most passionate about? Mm -hmm. Of all the things that you work with people on, where do you truly connect the most with your clients? Two things are, are showing up for me. One is this, this concept, like it, right now, this is, what, this is the way I say it these days, the all of it all. I am crazy passionate about each one of us knowing who we are in all of our glory and, and, and all of our stumbling blocks and having the capacity to hold space for all of it. Mm -hmm. um, that's huge. I think that talk about ease and a peace of mind that comes with being able to move through life with that ability. Um, so I'm, I'm crazy passionate about that. And, and I would say the other thing is um, this, this combination of truth telling and really getting people to engage and do something about what they want. Um, and, then, and then the piece that just feels like such a gifting is to support people, mm -hmm. um, to really hold people, especially when they're going through the tough stuff, because we all right. have this tough stuff and we have the tender spots and we need to come at that stuff differently. So I get crazy excited about just being able to do that for people too. I love that. Yeah. So tell me about a time that you just had to transform in your life. Maybe something went wrong, something, um, scary or stressful happened to you in your business life or in your personal life and tell us about the transformation that happened and how you grew from it. Great, great question. Um, the, the old course correction. <laughs> exactly. Um, I, again, tend to like to say that the two things that have rocked my world both positively and negatively the most are motherhood and entrepreneurship and pretty equal. <laughs> so um, I think for me, because I have a bit of that go-getter in me and a, a bit of that DIY in me, um, there's been times when I'll stick through things a little bit longer without seeking support. Mm -hmm. and, and it's when you get to those places where you realize you need somebody else's expertise mm -hmm. and the freedom of just saying help, um, that's how I've always course corrected is to reach mm -hmm. out and communicate with somebody on that and get, get some kind of support. Um, the other for me that's much more personal that happens within me and my system, if you will, is, is um, being able to be incredibly present to what's happening in the moment. And I think this is back to the first question of how busy we all are and how mm -hmm. overwhelmed we all are. That's the other way that I course correct on a regular basis in this kind of game on entrepreneur life and game on mother life and game on life life is to try to bring myself back to exactly where I am at that moment and remind myself this is the only place I have to be because there's not a lot of overwhelm when you're not thinking about 50 paces ahead of you. Yeah. Um, you really I don't hit know me if I answered you. that one the way you wanted me to, but there I was. <laughs> you really hit me when you talked about the fact that it's sometimes tough to ask for help. Mm -hmm. I've struggled with that personally. Mm -hmm. I'm sure a lot of people have dealt with that in the pride and the feeling of shame and not mm -hmm. feeling like it's okay, feeling like there, there's something wrong with asking for help. If you ask for help, you're admitting that you failed. Right. Mm -hmm. So how right. do you feel about that? What do you do for people if someone, or if yourself, if you're dealing with yourself, you, you know that you need help. How mm -hmm. do you get yourself to the point where you finally go and say, I need to find somebody to, to get me out of this mode that I'm in? Right. You know, it's interesting because obviously when you're the one giving help, which is a natural strength of mine, it comes so easy so to, to, to do the role reversal, you almost give like the, what, how is that so hard? 
Um, but then when it's us, <laughs> it, it really is. Um, you know, it's that self-worth story that shows up for all of us. Um, I really, it's, I'm having a hard time going back because I've gotten pretty good at it. And, I've and asking for help? Yes, be okay. because, of, nice. because of the leaps. You know, when you talk about the challenges in life, I mean, I think, again, um, motherhood was the first place where it was a necessity. It was a, just a necessity, and we don't live near family, so you just ask for help, mm -hmm. and you need to. And then entrepreneurship, there's just a whole boatload of things that are not my strength, and I don't know, I did not know what the hell I was doing. <laughs> so that really, that one took a little longer. <laughs> I mean, I was That's definitely, definitely you know, sitting at my computer and trying to do it myself, and then finally, I think it was where you realize you're not getting anywhere, where you're spinning your wheels, and um, it's almost like the overwhelm or the wheel spinning, all those negative emotions, I now look at as these incredible messengers mm -hmm. for there's got to be an easier way. And that's when I usually will reach out at this point. So you mentioned entrepreneurship, and now mm -hmm. I got I to ask you some more questions about that. Entrepreneurship is a big one for me. Mm -hmm. And I know a lot of people are trying to start a business or they've started one and they don't know what they're doing. What do you do when you don't know what you're doing? I mean, where did you reach out? Did you go to local organizations? Did you call a business coach? Yeah, um, combination. I would say that, and again, each person has to find their perfect mix, but for me it was, I needed to find my people. I needed to find people who are going through it. I needed to find people who had, not only who were in it with me at that time, mm -hmm. but um, really important for me to have people who had gone a little further. Because if I couldn't see that person who is a little further along the path than me, then it's, it's hard to strive toward that. It's hard to see it and feel it and taste it, which I think you need. You need that kind of um, inspiration to keep going. So it was a combination. It was groups, getting into networking groups, much like Women of Denver is amazing for this. Um, and then also just full-on mentorship and investing in myself. So hiring, I hired a business coach who okay. couldn't, really hold me through the process, both strategically and all the personal blocks that show up. So great. That, that, between those two, that was uh, the magic. Yeah. And there are still days. <laughs> <laughs> There's definitely always those days. Yes. And you know, for myself, I've actually gone to, there's local organizations like SCORE, and they mm -hmm. have mentorship mm -hmm. programs. So you go in and you sit down with someone that's been in business for a million years. And literally, I mean, the person I talked with, he had a resume, just, I just sat down and I said, okay, are you going to continue telling me everything? Mm -hmm. <laughs> He's like, I really taking need, notes? Yeah, he felt like I really needed to know his qualifications all yeah. the way through. But he'd done so many things. Mm -hmm. And so it made me feel confident that I was in good hands with someone mm -hmm. who had experienced business in different economic environments. Yes. That made me feel a lot more confident. He let me know that I was on the right track with some things and then told me where I need to you know, kick myself in the butt in other yeah. parts. And those are the parts I didn't want to be kicked in the butt on. Those, those <laughs> hurt, right? <laughs> but of course, you know, it's very valuable to have those yeah. coaches. So I'm glad that you reached out to a business mm -hmm. coach. Mm -hmm. And for all those out there, you know, there are free and paid resources for you if you want to start a business for yourself. So yeah. glad to know that you did that. Yes, necessary, very necessary. Yeah. So what's one final big lesson, mm. something that you want everybody that's watching this to know that, that you feel is just, just ready to spill off your tongue? Wants to be said. It, so yeah, wants it to needs be to be said. So this is what wants to be said, because it's, um, it's been showing up a lot lately, certainly as the, the turn from 2015 to 2016. And there's just this energy of it's time for action. We're being called into greater alignment with ourselves. I mean, there's just so much going on. And that's part of that, you know, it can bring anxiety as well, right? Mm -hmm. um, but it's the most obvious statement. So I'm going to end with this, that isn't it funny how the people who feel that they have time and space for themselves in their lives take time and space for themselves in their lives? And that's what I'm going to end with. Beautiful. You got to do it. <laughs> Starts here. <laughs> Thank you for watching. You just got to meet Julie Larkin, one of my favorite life coaches in the world. I'm so glad you took the time to spend a few minutes with us and get to know us a little bit more. I'll see you again soon.